our next topic is ecology. First thing we're going to talk about when we talk about ecology is biodiversity. Biodiversity is the number of different organisms that are living in a given ecosystem. Biodiversity is important because the more organisms you have living in an ecosystem, the more stability you have. What that means is that if one of the organisms dies off, the organism that eats it probably has another source for food. Speaking of food chains and food webs, if you look at the picture to the right, you'll see that lots of things are interconnected. Everything on the food web is going to be something that is considered a biotic factor. Biotic factor are things that are living. Yes, trees and plants and bacteria and mushrooms, those things are all considered living in addition to animals. If you look at the food web, what you'll notice is that there are arrows. Those arrows are going to represent energy flow. They show the direction in which the energy is moving. Let's go over a couple of the terms that are going to be represented in the food web. First thing we have is an autotroph or a producer. They're the same exact thing. An autotroph or a producer is something that undergoes photosynthesis in order to make their own food. Examples of autotrophs would include the things that I'm going to circle in green. We have trees, flower seeds, and grasses. Next thing we have are things which are called consumers. Consumers are animals that eat food. Now, a consumer is going to actually be anything that needs to ingest food. That would be all the animals. It would also include the mushrooms and the bacteria. If we wanted to get more specific, we might see something called a herbivore. A herbivore is something that eats plants. The other thing that we could have is going to be something called a carnivore. A carnivore is going to be a meat eater. Our final type of organism that's located on the food web is a decomposer. Decomposers are represented by bacteria and fungi. I'm going to circle those in black. What do mushrooms and bacteria do? Well, they're able to recycle the dead organic material into inorganic material so it can be used again by plants. What exactly does that mean? So it's going to recycle whatever dead organism happens to be in that particular area. The dead organism could be trees, right, leaves from trees. It could be petals from flowers. It could also be a dead organism like a rabbit or a mouse. And when we're referring to this inorganic material, what we're actually referring to is the nitrogen that's inside of us. So decomposers are able to recycle the nitrogen that is located inside of us and other living things. One type of question that they might ask on the regents would be, let's say that there was an increase in the mouse population. What would happen to the snake population? So what you would need to do is you would need to follow the arrow and figure out, hey, it's going to snake. Now, if there were more mice, what do you think would happen to the snake population? If you said that the snake population would go up, you would be correct. Why would it go up? Well, the snake population would increase because it has more food to eat. Let's say, however, it said, what's going to happen to the flower seed population? If we were to go and follow the arrow that points from the mouse back to the flower seed, what you'd see is that the mice actually eat the flower seeds. Since mice eat flower seeds, and there are going to be more mice, what do you think is going to happen to the flower seeds? That's right. The flower seeds are actually going to decrease in number. And that's because there are going to be many, many mice who are going to eat them. The next thing we have is an energy pyramid. If you look at the energy pyramid, let's just label what's going to be on each level. On the bottom, we're going to have what we can refer to as producers, autotrophs, plants, algae, anything that can undergo photosynthesis. 
Now that area has the most energy. Why does it have the most energy? The reason it has the most energy is that it's able to get that energy directly from the sun. As we move up the energy pyramid, the next level is going to be the herbivores. And the herbivores, they go and they eat plants. They have a little bit less energy. Why is it that they have less energy? Well, they have less energy because for each level as you go up, only about 10% goes up to the next level. 90% of that energy is lost forever. It's lost either in the form of heat or through metabolism, which refers to your eight life functions. If you go up to the next level, this could be a type of carnivore. Carnivores, once again, only get 10% of the energy from the level below it. 90% of that energy is lost forever, either because of metabolism or loss of heat. So we have, as energy moves up the food pyramid, energy is lost due to metabolism or heat. Plants have the most energy. That's because they are at the bottom of the food pyramid, and they are or the bottom of the energy pyramid, and they are able to get their energy directly from the sun through photosynthesis. An important thing to note is that energy is never recycled. The reason that we know it's never recycled is because 90% of it right off the bat is lost and only 10% go up to the next level. And remember, that energy comes directly from the sun. Looking at the diagram, you'll notice that it starts off as a bare field and then as time progresses, it's eventually going to form a forest. What's happening here? Well, each ecosystem is making it more suitable for the next ecosystem that is going to exist. We call this ecological succession. You could just call it succession for short. Succession is when an ecosystem gradually changes over time, even after it's been destroyed. Now, what would destroy it? Here, if we're looking at the hardwood forest, what can happen is there could be a fire, maybe there's deforestation, and then it unfortunately goes back to being a bare field. If you have enough time, however, that bare field is going to be able to reestablish itself as a hardwood forest. Now, it doesn't happen overnight, but after 100, 150 years, you could potentially have a forest there once again, assuming that there's been no other change to the ecosystem. Next thing we have is called material cycles. Material cycling is going to be something like water, for example, where you have the water cycle, carbon producing to carbon dioxide and oxygen through photosynthesis and respiration. And then we have the nitrogen cycle, which is directly related to those decomposers. Certain materials are recycled. What is never recycled, though? That's right, energy is never recycled. Our final picture for ecology is going to be this diagram here. If you look at the graph, it shows A increasing, and then eventually it levels up. Why is that? Well, this dotted line here is to represent the carrying capacity. Eventually, an organism reaches the maximum number of organisms that can live in any given area. Why is that? Well, that's because of a limiting factor. What types of things limit the population size? Limiting factors can include things like the amount of water. It can include the space. It could also include the amount of food. capacity maximum number of organisms and this is determined either by an abiotic factor and here's that term abiotic remember the a negates it bio means living so we're talking about non-living and then biotic bio meaning just living and that wraps it up for ecology